Hello everyone, my name is Ninua and welcome to my unhurried playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn Part 6.2. First of all, as this is my first unhurried playthrough video of 2023, I wanted to wish you all a happy new year. I hope this year proves even better than the last one, even if the last one was already great for some of you. I mean, it can always get even better. Let's indulge and be greedy a little bit. Okay, so last time we finally, finally left Gridania to explore beyond the Shroud and locking airship travel along the way. We shortly visited two city-states and then we unlocked and spent some time in the Mandeville Gold Saucer. You know, the finest entertainment venue in all of Eorzea. In this video, it's going to be a little bit more down to us, as I'll be unlocking Disciples of Land and Hand available in Ulda, and I'll work towards bringing them more or less level with the ones I already have from Gridania. Alright, let's get this show started! Alright, so if you remember from last time when I unlocked the Ethernet, most of the Disciples of Land and Hand were gathered together in the same corner of all Das, which is pretty practical, except for one, which is literally at the other end of town. <laughs> but thankfully there is a Netherite just in front of it, so it's still going to be easily accessible. Here I'm going to unlock the Disciple of Land first, just as in Gridania, which in Ulda is minor. Well met, adventurer. You stand within the Miner's Guild, the place where seekers of the realm's mineral wealth gather. With pickaxe and sledgehammer, we miners work rock and earth that they might yield us ores, fossils, precious stones and more. If you have a mind to join our ranks, you will be pleased to know that we are currently recruiting. Great riches await those with strong back and keen eyes. A decision you will not regret. You have just taken your first step towards striking it rich. To look at the lands around Uldar, one would be forgiven for thinking the region barren of opportunity. But beneath the surface, the scene could not be more different. There lie veins of copper, silver and gold beyond measure. For as long as he has dwelt in Sunderland, man has availed himself of these vast deposits, giving rise to a thriving mining trade which forms the foundation of our nation's prosperity. Of course, the mining trade as it is today owes much to an event which took place some century and a half ago, namely the Mad Mithril Rush. Never before had the Sultanate seen such an influx of migrants. Endless throngs came from lands near and far, spurred by on by the dream of discovering the mother load. Alas, a harsh reality awaited them. You see, the vast majority of these poor souls were miners in name alone, and they possessed neither the proper equipment nor the training to realize their dreams. To make matters worse, the mining concerns, who in those days held absolute power, did not scruple to exploit them. Presented with a glut of unskilled labor, they proceeded to fill every tunnel to bursting, and atrocious working conditions soon became the norm. Miners were paid a pittance for back-breaking labor, and so note of the riches they unearthed. Pushed to breaking point, the workers bound together to form the Miners' Guild, with the aim of improving conditions while protecting the integrity of the trade. Since then, we have sought to educate folk in correct mining practices, both to prevent accidents and to curb the impact that our trade has upon the environment. I trust you now have a better understanding of what we do. All that is left is to commit your name to our role. When you are ready to do so, pray speak with me again. I shall guide you through the enrollment procedure. Remember how that works? <laughs> so, are you ready to join the Miner's Guild? Level 1. Way of the Miner. 
music to my ears. Ah, it's a kind maid when one's pickaxe strikes gold. You must introduce yourself to Guildmaster Adalberta right away. Her approval is required if you are to be formally admitted to our ranks. In case you're unaware, Adalberta is perhaps the most accomplished of those miners who still swing a pickaxe. Her understanding of our trade is unsurpassed and her flair for prospecting uncanny. Her brain, in short, is a veritable gold mine of knowledge, much of it concerning the mining of gold. <laughs> Jesting apart, you stand to learn a great deal from her. When you are ready, pray present yourself to Adalberta. You will find her down the steps yonder, over by the bar. I see what you did there. Good joke. Well met, adventurer. Adalberta is my name and I'm the master of this guild. I take it you wish to become a miner. Well, our doors are open to all who aren't afraid to work hard and get dirty. Thanks to recent advances in refining techniques, it is now possible to smelt even low-purity ores. I mention this because it's allowed us to reopen a number of mines which were long thought exhausted, prompting trade to flourish. Truth be told, with business as it is at the moment, we can't take on enough new miners, and few folk make better miners than adventurers, you being a hardy lot. What's more, you're well-traveled, which serves to expand the guild's sphere of activity. Oh, but I'm not suggesting you join solely for our benefit. For your part, you'll acquire skills that will prove to your profit. A mutually beneficial arrangement, I trust you'll agree. So what say you? You will join us, yes? To work hard and get dirty. Then I bid you welcome to the Miner's Guild. May your toils never go unrewarded. Now then, here is a pickaxe to get you started. It's not the newest, but it should serve a novice well enough. Go on and take it up. See how it feels in your hands. Speak to me again when you're ready, and I'll assign you a little task to help you get into the swing of things. Okay, so we obtain the new pickaxe, so now we can create a new gear set for miner. There we go. Just need to uh, add some head and foot gear, although it's, that's not compulsory. And create a new gear set. Don't forget not to erase your previous gear set. Level 1. My first pickaxe. Adalberta wants to assign you your first task. The rewards are 300 points of experience, 115 gil and a hempen dalmatica of gathering. You look good with a pickaxe, Ninua. I look good with everything. Now that you are suitably equipped, your training can commence. A miner learns her craft best in the wilderness, with pickaxe in hand. To begin, let's see how you fare with good old copper ore. Bring me, say, 10 chunks. There are deposits of the stuff throughout Sunaland. I doubt you'll have to go very far outside the city. Seek out some promising locations outside the gate of the Sultana and the gate of Nold, and swing away. The motion may feel awkward at first, but in time it will become second nature. Something that you are going to realize very quickly is that Miner functions exactly like Botanist. You know how to do one, you know how to do the other, They're exactly the same. The name of the skills change a little bit, but it functions exactly the same way. The third Disciple of the Land is a bit different though, but uh, we'll get to that when we return uh, in Nimsalominsa. So for Botanist, uh, finding Nod to gather was done by using um, an ability called Triangulate. Here the ability is called Prospect, but it's again exactly the same. I'm just switching quickly and checking if I can craft gear to improve my miner a little bit, but I think I'm good to go as it is. Okay, 
So if I go to my gathering log, again, same thing. You can see copper ore and can be found both in Western Sunnerland and Central Central Sunnerland. And I'm going to go to Western Sunnerland for this. But both are equally valid. So new achievement for exploring Western Sunnerland for the first time and a new tutorial, finding mineral deposits. Miners can use pickaxes and other digging tools to mine the mountains of Eorzea and gather materials for use in crafting. Locations that are prime for mining are known as mineral deposits. Mineral deposits are only discernible from other stones when using the action prospect. While the action is active, the location of mineral deposits is displayed on the mini-map. And as you saw here, I had to activate it manually. Once you have arrived at a mineral deposit, select it to begin mining. And that was because I'm still only level 1 as a miner. Uh, I didn't have to do that as a botanist, but as I mentioned back in the day, that was because when I went out, my botanist was already level 2. And now, as you can see, Thread Acquired Auto Prospect. I don't have to activate it every time I switch to Miner anymore. And we have a new tutorial using actions from other classes. So let's have a look at this. The armory system not only allows your freedom to change between classes, but also the ability to wield the actions obtained through those Disciple of the Land and Hand classes. To make these actions accessible to your current class, start by opening character from the main menu followed by actions and traits. Next, select the desired class under Additional to display a list of available actions. Highlighting the checkbox will add the action to the list at the bottom of the Actions and Traits interface. Once an action has been added to the list, select the icon and press the button combination of the hotbar slot to which you wish to set it. At level 10, you will only be allowed a maximum of two additional actions. This number will increase every five levels up to a maximum of 10 actions. Okay, so let's have a look at this quickly. So additional, and here I have to go under additional, you have the icons of the different disciples of land. Here we go. Here we have the actions we can share with Botanist, or rather that Botanist can share with Miner. And I can assign it to my hotbar. So now I can use Triangulate to see both nodes for Miners and Botanist, even though I am a Miner. And here, if you are any serious about your crafting, you will want to start gathering a lot of copper ore because especially once you've unlocked uh, the Disciples of the Hand in Limsaluminsa, copper ore is going to fly off the shelf really, really quickly. I mean, you are going to end up eating the stuff for breakfast, at least for a while. And then it will be iron. Yeah, I, I'm also going to um, gather later on some muddy water because we are going to need it in this very video for some crafting. And here, Minding your own business, new achievement. Again, it's exactly the same thing as with Botanist. You get your first achievements for gathering 20 times from nodes level 1 to 10 in each of the main three regions. 
and then you get extra achievements for gathering 300 times uh, from nodes level 11 to 20 and so on and so forth. So now that I'm level 5, I can switch some of my gear. Here we go. I'm going to continue gathering some uh, copper ore, but I'm going to uh, cut here and come back once I'm finished. And back just in time to gather some muddy water, which I need for um, the level 1 alchemist quest. There are a handful of recipes that use muddy water, but not that many. Okay, so now I'm not going to return to the Miner's Guild right away. There is something else I want to gather here, but that's not going to be with my Miner. There are several key resources that can be found in Western Thanalan for crafters in the early stages. One is copper ore which we just saw. Uh, there is another type of ore often used in conjunction with copper that we'll gather a bit later. And there is this. Lush vegetation patch level 15. And that is why I absolutely wanted to do the botanist quest level 10 to obtain the size so that I could gather moco grass. Because reminder, you can only gather from lush vegetation patches if you have a scythe equipped, regardless of your level. And mocha grass is going to dominate your life as one of the disciples of the hand that can be unlocked in Ulda between level 1 and level 12, 13 roughly. And you're going to use a lot of it. It's like copper, basically. Oh, we come across a hidden item. In the course of gathering, disciples of the land will occasionally come across hidden items. A hidden item may also be classified as rare, meaning you can obtain only one before it disappears from the gathering window. Abilities that increase the number of items obtained during a single gathering attempt have no effect on rare items. So this one is not rare, it's just hidden. Uh, that means that sometimes it will show up on that nut and sometimes it won't. Whereas all the others are going to be constant on this nut. But they show up fairly regularly. So rare items the rare hidden items are the ones that um, may take you a while before you can come across again. And by the way, here all the hidden items are seeds. Now seeds are really useful if you have a house. You can do some gardening with them in apartments, but that's much more limited. Here you have a rare hidden item, as well as a Kurtas carrots seeds. And I was mentioning um, as we just unlocked a new ability that is going to increase your perception rating.
uh, a fate what to do what to do now I'm going to ignore it there is another resource that's going to be very in demand from level 15 onwards as a miner uh, but we'll uh, we'll have time to look into that a bit later Alright, so now I need to return to the Miner's Guild to complete the quest. And by the way, I also now have all the materials I will need for the first crafting quest for every disciple of hand I can unlock here in Ulda. So not a bad outing. Now obviously if you haven't gathered all of that before heading to uh, the different disciples of hand guild don't worry too much because as you saw in Gridania, you can always buy the basic materials for a nominal price. It's never going to cost you much. It's 10 chunks of copper ore I want. The metal is common enough in Sanalan. You shouldn't have trouble finding suitable deposits just outside the gate of the Sultana and the gate of Nald. Let's see here. Ten chunks, just as I ordered. Well done, Ninoa. Tell me, is being a miner old like you imagined? Harder than expected, is it? <laughs> All new recruits say as much. It takes a combination of knowledge, experience and instinct to know where to dig. Yet it is ultimately backbreaking labor that yields you your prize. Make no mistake, Ninoa, mining is grueling work, and you'll be duck tired most of your waking hours. But tell me, did you not feel invigorated each time your pickaxe struck home? Did you not experience a thrill of triumph when the earth finally yielded up your prize? That is what we miners live for. You may be ripe to collapse, your face caked in weak old dirt, but the promise of discovery drives you on. And the instant you find that we which have long sought, in that sparkling instant, you feel like a god among men. You've made a fine start, and I would have you maintain your efforts. Practice swinging your pickaxe till your arms have learned the motions, then return here. I have another little task for you. So the next quest is, as usual, available from level 5. I'm already level 5, but for now I'm going to head to the first Disciple of Hand guild. Namely, the Alchemist. So I'm going to switch to my crafted gear. And as always, it all starts with the receptionist. 
Ah, an adventurer, one of my favorite kind of people. I find your unquenchable thirst for exploration neatly complements the burning hunger for sagacity that marks our dedicated members. Welcome to the Alchemist Guild. Though I hesitate to define alchemy in such narrow terms, our main field of expertise is a concoction of various potions and elixirs. There are salves to treat all manner of afflictions, not to mention miraculous libations that enhance the imbiba beyond her natural physical limits. As an adventurer, I am sure you can appreciate the eminently practical applications of our work. What say you, madam? Care to take up mortar and pestle and join our ranks? Wonderful. Now then, allow me to give you a brief history of the guild before we tackle the official paperwork. Though alchemists are presently known as a quintessential brewers of potion, the profession itself arose from the desire to achieve an as yet unrealized ambition. The original driving purpose behind our art was, and perhaps still is, the discovery of a process that can transform base metals into gold or silver. The mystical medium thought necessary to effect such a transformation is the Philosopher's Stone, which is itself believed to have panacean properties and be capable of bestowing eternal life. The success yet eludes us. Years of endless experimentation towards this golden goal had the initially unintentional consequence of unearthing a wealth of knowledge in the field of alchemical medicine. Regretfully, Alchemy's potential to enrich the lives of the masses was first met with a wave of distrust, as if our ability to create helpful compounds was akin to dabbing in black alley witchcraft. The profession eventually gained credibility in Ulda through its integration into traditional medicine by Frondel's Frontistory, an institution known for producing respected physicians. Once the city's shift in perception became known, building alchemists wishing to study without fear of persecution journeyed to Ulda from every corner of the realm. It was not long before the gathering of inquisitive minds banded together to form the Alchemists' Guild. Thus, while our organization is intensely focused on perfecting and sharing the fruits of our research, it is also of paramount importance that we uphold the reputation of alchemy itself as a legitimate discipline. If you would revel in the secrets of our art, then you must be prepared to shoulder the responsibility I have described. Take a moment to dwell on these words before you truly enter the world of alchemy. Have you arrived at a decision? Are you ready to exult in the arts of alchemy and commit to the responsibilities that your enrollment entails? Level 1. Way of the Alchemist. And the rewards include 100 water shards and 50 lightning shards. Excellent. Then allow me to direct you to our guild master. Gaining his approval is a last test you must pass before becoming a full member of the guild. You will find Guildmaster Severian tending to his experiments at his personal workbench. I must warn you, he is a rather intense individual. Pray choose your words with care. Yeah, intense is one word for it. Oh, they're leaving just as I arrive. That is great. What? What is it this time? Ah, you must be the merchant's lackey come to bring me my imp wings. Let me have them then. Not a lackey? An aspiring alchemist, did you say? Speak up and pray that I heard you of Rye. Did that babbling fool Dietrich send you to me? I specifically requested that I be disturbed for nothing less than the coming of a second calamity. Do I appear as a kindly mentor to you? My research demands my absolute and undivided attention. Now be gone before I... But wait, perhaps I can... Yes, yes, you may be the very assistant I require. I have had a change of heart. Congratulations, I approve your application to the guild. It is with great pleasure that I welcome a fellow seeker of knowledge into the fold. Well, that was easy. We can dispense with the interminable initiation ceremony, yes? 
here is your first alembic, try not to drop it, for there is much work to be done. Yes, much work. That was one 180 degree for the books. Okay, so I'm just thing and then uh, register it as a new gear set. Level 1, my first alembic. Guildmaster Severian wants you to use a weathered alembic to perform your first alchemic miracle. So rewards are 300 points of experience, 150 water shards, 100 lightning shards, some muddy water, and a hempen quarter. Ah, I see you've managed to take hold of the alembic without injuring yourself. An auspicious beginning. Was that sarcasm? Let us see if we can continue this trend of unexpected success. Yes, sarcasm. For your first lesson, I want you to use your wizard alembic there and make me a bottle of distilled water. Distilled water is simply the end result of purifying a murkier sample of life's most vital element. As such, it provides the perfect introduction to one of alchemy's most fundamental processes, taking a material and refining it into a purer form. To perform this rudimentary exercise, you shall require a pail of muddy water and a water shard. The impure water can be purchased from the supplier standing near the entrance to the guild. The name momentarily escapes me. Esmanet? Yes, that was it. If it happens that you find this basic task beyond your abilities, then mayhap alchemy is not a discipline for you which would be quite upsetting, as I detest the thought of having to select a new assistant. Try not to disappoint me. As I said, intense is one word for it. Um, <laughs> okay, so crafting distilled water, as I said, was very simple. So now you understand why I wanted to gather some muddy water, although again, you can buy it from Esmanet for a very nominal price. Well, actually, it's more expensive than I remember, but you only need one, so... 14 gills should be doable. But yeah, it's just outside the gate, so y you better serve gathering it yourself. Yeah, that wasn't too difficult. Your task is to provide me with one bottle of distilled water. Come, come, we are wasting time. Purchase a pail of muddy water from Esmanet if you must. No, we're good. Magnificent! Your transformation into an alchemist has begun. Do you understand the liquid treasure you have made? Yes, it is still simply water, but now possessed of almost limitless potential. In a properly distilled w state, water provides the base ingredient for all manner of wondrous concoctions. On the other hand, a potion created with impure water is not only unlikely to have the desired effect, it may very well poison the imbiba. Look well upon the substance you have refined. See how crystal clear it has become? Not the most flavorful of libations, but still refreshing to pour over one's head on a stifling summer afternoon. Tell me, how did you feel in the instant of its purification? Such a fine result must have sent thrills of excited satisfaction down your spine. Yes, I know well the sensation. To glean a pristine drop from filthy swill. It is a miracle born of mortal artifice. Nothing can compare to that rush of triumph in the moment when physical laws bend to one's will. Nothing. The greater your mastery of alchemy, the more ecstatic that feeling becomes. Go. Fill your chambers with bottles of distilled water and revel in each success. 
I return now to my experiments. When next you disturb me, I shall expect your skills to be worthy of a guildmaster's chosen assistant. He really means for us to be his assistant, isn't he? Do you know who I am? Well, uh, to be fair, at this stage in the story, I'm um, nobody, or almost. But at least he is passionate about what he does, and you have to respect that. Okay, next up, let's go to the Weaver's Guild. Greetings, adventurer, and welcome to the wellspring of Uldan fashion. From humble thread, our peerless artisans weave wonders, dreams in fabric form. We are renowned as Eosia's finest purveyors of quality textiles and as her foremost arbiters of style. Needless to say, such renown was not worn without effort. Ours is a tremendously demanding profession, you see, but also a highly rewarding one. It is little wonder that so many adventurers have set their hearts upon joining us. Might you be one of them? Ah, I thought as much. Then I'm sure you're eager to learn all about our illustrious history. As I'm sure you know, Sunderland can be a perilous place, its vast deserts being wont to punish the unprepared, while a menagerie of ferocious beasts stalks the sands the greatest foe is, of course, the midday sun. And so, ever since man first set foot in this region, he has favored light flowing fabrics that shield him from the sun's rays while allowing his skin to breathe. Of course, Uldans have ever been a people of taste, and demand for more extravagant designs spurred innovation, resulting in textile goods whose appeal extended far beyond our borders. Merchants had little trouble selling Uldan fabrics in foreign markets, so great was their reputation for beauty and quality. And when traders from those same markets sought to peddle their lesser products in Tanalan, well, it gave us little cause for concern. Sun silk tapestries is synonymous with the textile trade in Ulda, you see. Those who come here hoping to peddle cheap rags swiftly learn the price of doing business in our territory. Wiser men and women with an interest in our trade choose instead to join the guild, which the company generously operates for the betterment of Uldan society. We offer our members the tools and techniques needed to become successful. And should they prove themselves especially skilled, they may even be offered direct employment as sunsilk weavers. Just imagine, adventurer, your designs could one day dictate the course of all and fashion. If you desire such fame and influence, then you might be granted a place with us. Provided that you are willing to embrace hard work. To ensure candidates can endure the rigors of our profession, our guildmaster has taken it upon himself to evaluate each one personally. When you are ready to submit yourself to his rigorous scrutiny, say the word. Are you ready to meet the guildmaster? First impressions are everything, and you do not want to present yourself poorly. Level 1, Way of the Weaver. And the rewards include 100 lightning shards and 50 wind shards. Excellent! Though I do wonder if your attire is appropriate for the occasion. You will find the esteemed Redolent Rose supervising guild operations over yonder. He is... how shall I put this? He is relentless in his pursuit of excellence. So long as you demonstrate that you are similarly committed, he will treat you fairly and with respect. What do we have here? Another adventurer in search of thrills and excitement? Shall I dance your merry jig? No? Well, if this fails to please you, I suggest we run along. Perhaps the women of the Ruby Road Exchange will be more to your liking. Why? No need to take it like that. Oh, so you mean to become a weaver? 
Then we have something to discuss after all. I shall be blood. Weaving is an art, and like all true artists, we must make sacrifices and suffer for our craft. So tell me, adventurer, are you prepared to suffer? So you say, but only time will tell. In any case, you'll need equipment to get started. This needle should suffice for now. I did not explain what a needle is, I trust? Good. Then hold it as you would when sewing and show me you're ready to begin. Okay, so time to switch to the needle of the weaver and create a new gear set. And we're good to go. Level 1, my first needle. Redolent Rose would like to assign you your first task as a weaver, so reward our 300 points of experience, 150 lightning shards, 100 wind shards, some mocha grass and a hempen quarter. Well, well, you look like you were born to hold one of those. Even so, I suggest you keep it somewhere safe, especially when clambering over haystacks, as I shan't be issuing another. I see what you did there, Redolent Rose. Now you certainly look the part, but it remains to be seen if you can play it. I bid you craft me a spindle of hemp and yarn. A triffing task, yes? Well, I do hope you find it so. Should it seem even remotely testing, you have no future at this guild. To make hemp and yarn, you will require moko grass and lightning shards. The former can be purchased from our dear Kigima, the latter you will have to find for yourself. That is all. Yeah, or instead of finding the lightning shards, we can use one of the 250 he's just given us. So now you understand why I went out to in search of moko grass. And it was as simple as that. Kigima can provide the moko grass, but you must procure the lightning shards. Or have you made your yarn already? Yep. Well, bless my soul, she can't follow basic instructions. It would seem you have grasped the fundamentals, good girl. Yarn and cloth may be in my materials, but they must be crafted with no less care than a whole garment. For though the finest garments are greater than the sum of their parts, their parts are invariably the finest. Do remember this, Ninua, as you continue your training. Practice making yarn and other simple items and return once you have attained a basic level of proficiency. Did you say grant you but necessary? And you did tell me you were ready to suffer. Ah, well, he's right. But I think we'll be alright. <laughs> alright, and we already have just one guild to visit. And that's the Goldsmiths' Guild. Which is really only just a short walk away, but etherites make you lazy. Good evening to you, adventurer, and welcome to the Gold Mrs. Guild. Have you come to observe our artisan at work? Indeed, it is a marvel to watch goldsmiths transform raw metals and uncut gemstones into sparkling rings, earrings, and necklaces, some of which possess magical properties, no less. You know, if you'd like to try your hand at goldsmithing, the guild is open to adventurers like yourself. No prior experience is required, for we teach all you need to know about the craft. Would you be interested? It pleases me greatly to hear you say so. As the first step, I would have you understand the purpose of our guild. The vast mineral resources of Thunderland have given rise to a grand goldsmithing tradition, which has been refined through the ages. Our techniques are renowned across the realm, our creators held in the highest regard. However, we of Estames Lapidaries, the premier source of Uldan jewelry, were not content to rest on our laurels. 
Seeking to advance our craft, we turned our eyes to the east, the only place in the known world whose goldsmithing was said to rival our own. We built the finest facilities to become their master heather and blended their foreign techniques with ours. Our guild quickly became the center of, of Eorzean goldsmithing. I hear you shall benefit from the refined wisdom of countless veteran craftsmen. You will learn to see the potential in your materials and shape them to your will. These are essential skills, for a goldsmith must hone his eyes to identify and appraise all manner of materials and, when needs be, recognize imitation for what they are. It is even said that a master goldsmith cannot certain the authenticity of a man himself. You may one day come to possess such vision, but even the most magnificent jewel begins life as a rough-hewn stone. It must first be cut and polished before it can delight the eyes with its brilliance. If you would become a goldsmith, you must needs refine yourself as you would a gemstone. It will take much time and effort, and there is no guarantee of success. Should you be certain that this is a life you seek, speak to me once more. Before you can embark upon your journey to become a goldsmith, you must first seek an audience with our guildmaster. Are you ready to do so? Level 1. Way of the goldsmith. And the rewards include 100 wind shards and 50 fire shards. You shall find Maestress Serendipity on the workshop floor, just down the steps. Show her your burning desire to learn, and you are certain to receive her permission to join. Stop right there, you little troublemaker. People are working here. Oh, pardon me, I I had you mistaken for a moment. For a moment there, I... Uh, let's start over, shall we? What brings you here today, adventurer? Do you by chance have aspirations to become a goldsmith? Really? That's great! Welcome, welcome! I'm Serendipity, but you can call me Sarah. Or is that too informal? Sorry, I'm still unaccustomed to this whole guildmaster business. Ah, right. What did you say your name was again? Adrian? Oh, right! Ninua Uzume. Well then, Ninua Uzume. Work hard and one day your creations may line the shelves of esteem's aesthetics. Trust in yourself and you can achieve anything. That was sufficiently inspiring, I trust. Good. Next order of business. Here is your new chase hammer. Well, I say new, but it's actually a bit weathered. But never you mind that. Just show me that you know how to hold it so we can get started. Well, you know the drill by now. Let's record the gear set and talk to Serendipity again. Level 1. My first Chesar Hammer. Serendipity would like to officially begin your training as a goldsmith. The rewards are 300 points of experience, 150 wind shards, 100 fire shards, some copper ore and a hempen quarter. Great! Let's get started! Though to be honest, I'd swear you've done this before by the way you wear that hammer on your hip. Mind you, even if you do have some experience, a responsible guildmaster must ensure that her charges have a firm grasp of the fundamentals. Therefore, I command you to craft me a copper ingot. It's simple, really. All you need is copper ore and a wind shard. Our guild supplier, Alstan, can supply you with copper ore, and I gave you a few wind shards along with your hammer. At least, I think I did. If it turns out you don't have any, you'll need to get some yourself. Isn't this exciting, Ninua? Your first real challenge as a member of the Goldsmiths' Guild. Show me the ingot when you are done. Good luck! She is quite different from most other Guildmasters, isn't she? But you have to admire uh, her enthusiasm.
and start the copper ingot ready. Let's show it to serendipity again. Oh, did you forget what materials you need? Ask Dan over there can sell you copper ore, but I'm afraid he doesn't stock wind shards. Don't think too hard, Nidua. Just give it a try and see what happens. Hmm, you know, I think this is quite... Ne, <laughs> No, I don't want to skip the cutscene. Attack garbage, the worst, not even fit for making a chamber pot. Quiet, Gigi. I am the guild master. I get to decide what's fit for a chamber pot. <laughs> Please excuse me, he gets a bit overzealous at times. Gigi is my assistant. But he has a habit of butting in with his opinions. Most mammoths are rather simple, capable of no more than rudimentary speech. They can be relied upon for manual tasks, but little else. Gigi, on the other hand, is quite intelligent. And quite stubborn, <laughs> I might add. I suspect that's due to his age. He's been with the guild for an eternity, ever attending each guild master. But recently he's been coming and going as he please. Ne, Gigi, kneel before Gigi, the one true guild master. Respect my authority, ignorant mortal, or suffer my wrath. <sighs> it's like this every day, Ninua. I'm afraid the experience he's accumulated over a century of assisting guildmasters has made him arrogant. It's quite intimidating, really. I may be the guildmaster, but he's like a walking, talking archive of all knowledge to do with our craft. Uh, I completely forgot about your ingot. Sorry, sorry. As I was about to say, I think this is very, very good for a beginner. It's reasonably pure and well-formed. I dare say you've got a knack for this, Ninua. What you need now is practice. So keep practicing with your hammer and come back here when you've gotten more comfortable using it. Ne, GGG, bugger of green horn. <laughs> bugger of. I love the way he tells you these horrible things and then looks at you with those big eyes, which obviously reminds me of Vivi. So I can't find myself to be mad at him. All right, so what we need is practice. And that's exactly what we are going to do because I want to uh, do the level five quests as well while we are at it. And an easy way to practice is leave quests. Greetings, adventurer. I deal in the issuing of guild leaves. Now, remember we unlocked the uh, guild leaves uh, at Gridania. And when we did the unlocking quest, it told us that city-state guild leaves were unlocked. So that applies not only to Gridania, but it applies to all three city-states. That's why we can do them here and do them in Linsa Lominsa as well, at least the early levels. So I'm just checking between guild leaves for items I'm unlikely to craft otherwise. And also, guild leaves for items I can craft with a minimal purchase of other elements.
And all you need to level up to level 5 is really just the one leaf quest. That's going to be enough. Unless you take the leaf quest for the most base material. Um, because as you can see, leaf quests of the same level are not all created equal. They will award you different experience points based on the difficulty and the level of the crafting of the item you craft. And the recipient for all this quest in Ulda proper is Roach, who is here at the Rebel Road Exchange. You just saw him with that uh, red icon above his head. So I just need to check what materials I need to craft the copper wristlets. So there's one copper ingot and then some copper rings. And copper rings themselves require copper ingot. But again, because um, at this level I can't be bothered with um, the quality of the item, it goes really fast. And I'm already over leveled. <laughs> Goes very quickly. Good morning, adventurer. And again, our uh, picking up. One moment, please. And again, sign here, please. Thank you and have a nice day. He likes to keep things short, doesn't he? And we are already level seven. So we uh, learned Master's Bend, which I haven't had to use yet, have I? Okay, now I'm looking for the Hempen Undershirt. And as you can see, the recipient will be someone else. So I'm quickly going to craft it. Okay, now I have to find the recipient who is going to be in Western Thanalan. It's actually near to where we were gathering the copper ore earlier. I'm always interested in what other bards are wearing. Well, I'm interested in what other people are wearing in general, but uh, bard in particular. By the way, don't do what I'm doing right now, which is wandering around as a crafter. Because your chances of survival, if you encounter anything uh, with some aggro, is not good. <laughs> I only do that because I know this area and I know I risk nothing. But um, generally speaking, you should avoid.
this stripling is who they sent in answer to my summons? I trust you understand the importance of this work. Well, I suppose this is adequate. You may return to your so-called adventuring. I just imagine him doing, you know, a sign with a hand for you to go away. Okay, I'm going to talk to the leaf meat here because I still need to do one leave for alchemist and here I'm going to cheat a little bit because I'm not going to craft this item because the problem with the uh, alchemist recipes is that most of them requires items that I don't have on me So instead I'm handing over items I already had in my inventory. And you can do that by the way. There's nothing in the system that verifies that you have indeed crafted yourself the item. You can either exchange for an item that you already have in your inventory because you received it from a quest or an item you bought as well. So both are perfectly acceptable. It really depends why you do the leaf quest. If it is just to complete the leaf quest itself, because later some leaf quests will have unique items, then it doesn't matter if you craft the item yourself or you bought it on the market, for instance. If it's to level up, you better served by crafting the item yourself and um, as a result I do have to do another leaf quest because just handing over items that I had was not enough to level my alchemist to level 5. But thankfully, that's for another item that I had in my inventory. So again, I don't have to go to the guild, buy all the items to then craft it. And this time I'm going to hand over the maple wand. And now we're good. We even unlocked a new achievement. Earn a cumulative total of 1000 gil from leaf quests. So now we are good to take on all the class quest level 5 for Disciples of Hand in Ulda, except suddenly I remember that there is something I wanted to craft for my crafters, precisely. Because I have gear for all part of the body at level 5 dedicated to crafters, except the hands. So I'm going to craft one. And that's the hemp and half gloves. Now I could have crafted these even earlier, but I wouldn't have been able to do them at high quality. But now I can. Because that again slightly improves the stats. And in crafting much more than in battle, unless you're talking about high level 
fights, stats are going to matter a lot more. In gathering as well. Now right now it's not as obvious but we will see there will be a point much later on where we will hit a ceiling and uh, we will need to um, find ways to improve our stats and it's going to be a matter of one point or two points to be able to do or not do something. But again, it's talk for something that we are going to see only really at the very end of a Ram Reborn 2.0 or even in the patches afterwards. So for now, just regularly upgrade your gear and you'll be fine. Level 5. Once more unto the breaches. Redonald Rose is now willing to assign you your second task. The rewards are uh, 1435 points of experience, 194 gil, lightning shards, wind shards, a second hand tool for weavers, and the regular level 5 gear pieces among the options, and some Aladantine pieces. Back so soon? Very well. Let's resume your training. Since last we spoke, you will doubtless have spent your time making the basic products of our trade, namely yarn and cloth. Now I would have you take such basic products and craft whole garments from them. Make three pairs of hempen breeches and present them for my inspection. You'll be working with hempen cloth and yarn this time, as well as a little bit of leather. Kikima can furnish you with materials to help you get started. Ah, uh, but eager as I am to see the fruits of your labor, it would be remiss of me not to mention that there are more economical methods of procuring that which you need. For example, the mocha grass from which you have been dutifully making yarn can be freely gathered out in the wilds. That said, one can't simply rip it out of the ground with one's hand. A scythe is needed, as well as a working knowledge of botany. Have you perchance made the acquaintance of a botanist or two? If not, I heartily recommend that you do. They are attractively earthy without seeming dirty and useful besides. Having said all of that, I will not accept a newfound passion for botany and its practitioners as an excuse for the late delivery of your breeches, so don't keep me waiting. I, um... I never even thought of botanists in that light. Um, <laughs> you do you, Randall and Rose. But it's okay, I'm not judging. Alright, so for each pair of breeches I will need two cloth, one yarn and one leather. So I'm going to craft all of the basic elements first. So these include three hempen yarn. Well, six, actually, because every time you craft, you get two. And I will need the leather. Which is a base, a level one recipe for leather worker, so that's easy enough. Also, a side note, you'll notice that I'm not crafting anything at high quality. I could do so. But the quest doesn't require me to, and to be honest, I know I'm going to level up just fine, so I don't need to craft high quality items at this point for this particular quest. If you do not intend to spend a lot of time on crafting and you want to be more efficient, I would recommend that you do craft high level quality items for these class quests, even when they don't ask you to. But that's up to you, really. From here, I'm quickly crafting the cloth, and now that I have all the base materials, I can assemble them into the bridges. So 
So that's one pair done and I have to do the same thing again two times. So I'm going to quickly do that and we'll see each other when I'm done with them. All right, so I just need to assemble my last pair and we're good. I take it the breaches are ready. Yep. Not bad, Ninua. Not bad at all. This style of legwear has never been particularly fashionable, nor has its design changed significantly over the years, fluctuating lengths aside. But I digress. I wondered if you might try for a variation on the conventional design, but I see you opted for orthodoxy. A wise decision, in this case. Hemp and clothing is inexpensive and durable, making it popular amongst farmers, miners and others who work the land. Such customers value comfort and mobility over all else. They may appreciate more elegant forms, but they will not sacrifice function for them. Each garment has a purpose, Ninua. A purpose that you should always bear in mind. A scalloped hem is about as useful to a miner as nipples on a gladiator's breastplate. Now then, having completed your latest task, I believe you have earned this spinning wheel. Use it in combination with your needle and your work will benefit from it. Saying that, it will of course take you a little while to become accustomed to using the tools together. You need not worry though. I fully intend to give you ample opportunity to acquire the knack. In fact, I won't be teaching you anything else until you have. By the time that spinning wheel feels like it belongs in your hand, I dare say I'll have thought of a new task for you. Until then, my girl! Now, you saw me grab one of the pieces of gear, even though I already have one of them and I don't need them. But I know that I can resell these pieces of gear once I have access to the market, uh, that is, for more than what I would get from the elegant pieces. But again, if you are not on a subscription and don't plan on subscribing anytime soon, I would recommend that you pick up the elegant pieces instead. Because that would probably make more financial sense to you. Since you won't be able to sell on the market anytime soon. Level 5. Gorgets Rising. Serendipity has a new task for you. The rewards are 1,435 points of experience, 194 gil, some wind shards, some fire shards, the a secondary tool for goldsmiths, and the usual suspects in the options. Oh, Ninua, I'm honestly a bit surprised to see you. Most newcomers find Gigi's evaluations so harsh that we never hear from them again. I'm so glad that you didn't take him seriously when he said your copper wasn't fit for a chamber pot. I mean, really, it doesn't even make sense. You could make a chamber pot out of anything. It's not helping. Anyway, I hope you've been working hard because your next task won't be nearly as easy as the last. Listen well, Ninua. I want you to make me three copper gorgets. For this, you'll need copper ingots, which you very conveniently learned to make last time. Now, I directed you to purchase ore from Alstan before, but there are other ways to obtain it. You could dig it up yourself, or perhaps befriend a lonely miner and convince him to share some with you. However you choose to obtain your materials, I'm sure you'll put them to good use. Befriend a lonely miner. Really, serendipity? Anyways, so just as last time... Uh, we need to make some leather.
And now, as you just saw, there are two copper ingots, but um, copper gorgets, so I need to make six in total. So I'm going to assemble the one and as before I do everything else. Off screen. And now interestingly I had a 4% chance that my item would turn high quality and it did. So what I am going to do now is that I'm going to craft the other two off screen. And we are back as I assemble my last copper gold jet. So remember I had this one high level one. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to keep this one for myself. And I'm going to exchange the one I have in my armory chest which is a regular one so i placed it in my inventory by right clicking on it so again i put the um, copper gorget hq on my archer and I'm going to do the same with Lancer. And now I'm going to complete the quest with Serenity Pity. Are the gorgeous ready yet, Ninua? Don't keep me waiting too long. Hmm, well, in my opinion, Ne GGG, gorgeous, your gorgeous are gorgeous, greenhorn, oh wait, I meant grotesque, ungodly, an affront to the gods themselves, for shame. Beg your pardon, Ninua, I'm afraid that, that constructive criticism isn't one of GG's strong points. But where was I? Ah, yes. Your gorgets are well made, strong and functional, and at the least they should be, as they are meant to protect one's throat. When it comes to basic pieces like these, we don't have much creative freedom. Still, this doesn't mean we should put in less effort, especially since the techniques used to craft simple accessories are the same ones used to craft elaborate ones. Now then, you've learned how to handle your hammer, but there's another tool I'd like you to get acquainted with. With this grinding wheel, you will find it easier to add the finishing touches when you craft. Try using it, and you'll see what I mean. Keep your nose to that grinding wheel, and you'll be ready for your next challenge in no time at all. And so, as far as Disciples of Hand are concerned, there's just Alchemist left to go, but I won't do this right now. I'm going to postpone it just a little bit. And I'm going to head for the Miner's Guild instead. Level 5. Know the land. Adalberta wants to teach you the importance of knowing the land. The rewards are 1435 points of experience, 194 gil, a bronze pickaxe, and a choice between leather culottes, hempen work gloves, 
or two alagantine pieces which sell for 50 gil. Hello there, Ninua. It is good to see you again. Judging by the blisters on your hands, it is plain you've been hard at it with your pickaxe. Good. You ready for the next stage of your training? Eosea is a vast realm filled with diverse environments, and her mineral wealth varies from region to region. Even within Sunderland, there is a marked difference between East and West. If you want to be a successful miner, it's essential that you know where to look for what. And for that, you have to become intimate with Eosea. How else can you expect her to reveal her innermost secrets to you? Getting to know her every square mole is no small undertaking, of course, but the yams soon add up, as I'm sure you'll find with my next task. I'd like you to seek out 10 bone chips for me. Just so you don't go about it completely blind, here is a hint. You'll find this just beyond the gate of Nold. Off you go now and happy digging! The Gate of Nold means Central Sunderland. And that's easy enough because we have direct access through the Ethernet. Now, as you can see, I'm going to go to the Gate of Thal. It's not far off. Oh yeah, it's the first time we go to Central Sunderland. I had forgotten. So that's a new achievement for us. And I'm going to switch for Archer. Now that's going to be weird, right? You need to gather bone chips. That's because there is something else around this area that I want. And I'm going to obtain it only by hunting for snapping shrews. Well, only they are not the only ones to have them, uh, but they are convenient to uh, farm in this area. And that's animal sinew. Now, they are very cheap to buy at um, the leather worker shop. So you don't have to gather them. You could just, you know, regularly return to the leather worker shop and just buy them. I think it's, what, it's two or four gil? I think it's four gil per piece. But I like to procure them myself. So I'm going to farm a few here. There is this entire area where there are a lot of snapping shrews around. And I'll see you again shortly. So here I'm just getting one or two more and we'll be done. And I'm going to put these animal sinew pieces to use right away. So they're particularly useful for weavers and leather crafters, as you can see here. So I'm going to craft a couple of pieces that are going to be of use for my gatherers. And again, I don't do this at home that is uh, crafting in the middle of the world, unless you are certain that this is a safe area, which I am. So I'm going to ignore the uh, gear condition tutorial for now. I will look into that a bit later. And here I took the time to craft high quality materials because since I'm way going to wear this, I want a high quality item. Okay, so that's one piece. 
because remember, I don't have a dedicated piece for my gatherers, for the legwear. No, I do. And I'm also going to uh, craft a better hunt piece, which only requires moko grass, by the way, it doesn't require animal sinew. So it's a hemp and work glove that I want to craft. For that, I'll need to craft a couple a couple of cloth i'm going to ignore the repairing gear tutorial for now Now, here I need to use Master Mend to add to my condition. Here we go. So now I have enough to finish the piece. And we've acquired Quick Synthesis. You can now craft items using Quick Synthesis. Quick Synthesis is available for any item you have successfully crafted at least once using traditional methods and can significantly reduce the amount of time required to create multiple normal quality items. To begin Quick Synthesis, open your crafting log, select the desired recipe and then press the Quick Synthesis button to the immediate left of the Synthesis button. As Quick Synthesis focuses on completing the recipe as fast as possible, it is difficult to produce high quality items. If quality is your aim, normal synthesis is recommended. So earlier with all those recipes we had to do three times, we could have used quick synthesis if we had it unlocked already because it didn't require high quality items for those quests. And it's going to come in very handy for the level 10 class quests for Disciples of Hand, at least for most of them. Okay, so I've just equipped my miner with my newly crafted gear. And we are good to go. I'm just going to check the gathering log to locate exactly the bone chips. And as you can see, it's a deposit just a few arms away from us. So as with most items before, um, I need 10. I'm going to gather a few more because they're going to be useful mostly for goldsmithing recipes and for alchemists. It's not the most in-demand thing in the world, but we are going to use them a few times.
Now we're going to look at the figures for gathering because remember I only have really basic gear and yet my chance of triggering the gathering boon effect is 18% even though I don't even have a secondary tool yet so crafting your gear and upgrading regularly is really useful because it it does help gathering a bit faster and that's going to be even more true later on okay here I'm gathering also the lightning shards to uh, get the bonus for first time gathering and I'm going to gather a little bit more because I want to reach level 10 I want to do the level 10 quest right away I'm not going to go anywhere we haven't seen already, so I'll see you after I'm done. Alright, and back as I'm still at level 9, but so close to level 10 that completing the current quest would push it over. So that's fine. Gatherers in general are very easy to level up, especially if you like to gather your own materials for crafting. It will level itself. You just have to push it a little bit at the very beginning and then at the very end of a run reborn. So let's hand over the bone chips. Ah yes, precisely 10 bone chips. You've done well, Ninua. No doubt you had trouble tracking this down at first, but each chip you found added to your understanding. For your efforts, you've come to know where best to search for bone chips, and so it goes for everything else we mine. Now, in addition to learning where to find materials, you should also make a point of knowing who needs them. For instance, Armorers and blacksmiths are our best customers when it comes to ores, while goldsmiths would struggle to ply their trade if we didn't supply them with gold and gemstones. Oh, and I mustn't forget the alchemists. Those fellows can never have too much rock salt or cinnabar, and we often rub shoulders with them. In short, know whence it comes and whither it goes. To be sure, you still have much and more to learn, and there is no substitute for hard work. Oh, don't look so gloom. Just be thankful you don't have to bleeding memorize all that information. You have a gathering log for such stuff. Make good use of it and you can't go wrong. That's all for now. Keep up your efforts and visit me again when you've spent more time in the worlds with pickaxe in hand. I'll have another task for you when you've perfected your swing. So for the options, the same logic applies here as uh, with the Disciples of Hand. So we've accessed quarrying. In addition to mining, miners can use secondary tools to quarry items from parts of stones referred to as rocky outcrops. As is the case with mineral deposits, these locations are only discernible when using the action prospect. To quarry, you must first equip a sledgehammer to your offhand. Sledgehammers can be obtained from shops, markets or quests. Level 10. The Cutting Edge. Adalberta needs you to undertake a task in the name of the Miner's Guild. The rewards are 5,899 points of experience, 289 gil, a bronze sledgehammer, surprise surprise, and pieces of gear level 10 to 11 or two Alagan bronze pieces. Ah, there she is, the rising star of the miners guild. Oh, don't be like that, I'm only teasing, which is not to say that it isn't true. <laughs> the fact is, you've been working tirelessly and you've improved more quickly than I could have hoped. Indeed, I think you're ready to handle a task in the name of the guild. As you probably know, we receive orders from various parties but most come from Amagina and Sons Mineral Concern. 
The concern actually owns this hall, but they have kindly given us the loan of it. In return, they get first pick of guild talent to work their minds. On occasion, they send requests for us to procure less widely used minerals, commodities required in quantities too small to warrant anything beyond an ad hoc arrangement. One such request happens to have arrived just now, and I want you to take care of it, Ninua. This time the concern needs 10 pieces of obsidian, and I'd like you to procure them. You'll have the best luck searching around the hammers in Western Sunalan. So there is nothing too different between this quest and the others. It's just that the level is slightly higher, but because we've upgraded our gear a little bit, this is going to be uh, pretty easy. The only challenge would be to find it if we didn't have the gathering log. But again, it tells you exactly where to look. So it's just a bit further west from where we gathered the copper ore. By the way, when you go to that area, don't forget to turn on sneak, otherwise you're going to get a nasty surprise from yars and feeders around here. And unlike most other quests, obsidian is not something we're going to use a lot of. So I'm not going to uh, gather more than the 10 necessary. On the other hand, something incredibly necessary for crafters is tin ore. You'll need it in conjunction with copper ore, both uh, for blacksmiths and armorers which are Disciples of Hand in Linsa Lominsa. So, it is good to have some on you at most times, at least as long as you are a low-level crafter. At least between level 1 and 15, and then we'll start moving on to uh, other materials. Anyways, I'm going to gather a few more and ask you right after that. And I think I'm good. I'm going to return to Ulda for once. I'm going to indulge and use teleport. Because I think I deserve it. And also, uh, we have now more than 10,000 gills. So 81 is not going to hurt nearly as much as it used to in earlier stages. Remember, it's 10 pieces of obsidian we need. You'll have the best luck searching around the hammers in Western Sunderland.
Oh, this is some fine obsidian, so Concern will be well pleased. In case you're wondering, the spoils of your labor are bound for the Coliseum. I'm told there's to be an exhibition featuring ancient arms. One of these is the Makawittle, a wooden sword with shards of obsidian embedded in its edge. Before man learned to work metal, he used various kinds of stone to craft blades for his weapons. Obsidian was among the most coveted, thanks to the razor-sharp edge it could achieve. These days, of course, blades are commonly forged of steel, and obsidian has fallen out of favor. But there are still folk out there willing to pay good coin for it, nevertheless. As an ambitious young miner, you'd do well to pay attention to such customers. Make the effort to stay abreast of demand and your efforts will be more richly rewarded. You continue to impress with your progress, Ninua. It's past time you learned how to use a sledgehammer. It's a secondary tool we use in conjunction with a pickaxe. Thus equipped, you'll be able to break out crops of bedrock and get to the precious minerals within. Well, what are you waiting for? Go and find a rocky outcrop and give that sledgehammer of yours a swing. Alright, so now the rocky outcrops are ours, because without a sledgehammer you can't uh, mine from them. So that's why we are not limited. Uh, in what we gather, except by our level. All right, so I'm going to conclude this here because it's been already quite a while. We will go back to the Alchemist Guild a bit later, but that can wait. Uh, we use Alchemist recipes less than some of the others. So yeah, time to conclude this uh, video. I'm just going to return to Nin, as always, or almost always. Alright, so it's going to be it for part 6. So we've unlocked the other two city-states, we've unlocked the gold saucer, we've unlocked disciples of hand or and land in uh, Ulda. So all that's left to do for us now, as you can see, the duty list on the right is cleared, is to resume the MSQ. And we will do that in the next video. And believe you me, it's going to be a pivotal one. I wish you all a very good day, a wonderful week, and again, all my best wishes for 2023. Many blessings for you and your loved ones. And until next time, bye-bye.